Hello, hello, hello. My name is Dr. Branko Tama, and I'm here tonight uh, trying to just give you a little bit of update uh, wherever you are, from Liberia, Morovia, Kakata, Tottenham, just want to use this time to be able to uh, let you know that uh, we are here tonight with the second episode. For those who are on uh, the Bridge Call Civility group on Facebook, I know we have had membership that have gone up to nine, about 94 right now and getting towards 100 people on there. Uh, there was a topic that I actually posted, you know, within the group. And I want to make this interactive uh, just to let you know, sometimes I don't let the car out of the bag, but uh, there will be gift cards given out to people. There will be reward. There will be uh, gift shared out randomly every at the end of every month for participation and those who's really making a difference. Because the goal is to see how we can apply or where are we contributing towards the topic and making sure that we are all part of this together. And I don't want this to be a group that will just be there waiting to all we receive. I want to be able to con contribute to what is going on and to be able to make a difference. And when you look at the name, the bridge called civility, I am looking out there for bridge builder, people who grasp, you know, the concept, people who have been in such a way, you know, making a difference. Because it's important. Many a time we focus more on who we are, what we want, to the point that we will forget to know that we have a responsibility to be able to also give back, to be able to also empower others. So as we go to the next episode, this will be episode two tonight, you know. Today is uh, July 25th, and I'm broadcasting here from uh, Minnesota, Egan, Minnesota. So USA, wherever you are, join me in. I want to say welcome. And as I said, I want this to be interactive. So just to give you a quick update, I, my media guy have been so busy, you know, trying to help me, hook me up, set me up with stuff. Just want to officially let you know that as of today, the Bridge Call Civility Initiative is now on Apple Podcasts. So you can follow the Apple Podcasts and also make a comment. We also on Google Podcasts. The Bridge Call Civility is also now on Google Podcasts. And we are also on Ahad Radio, you know. So we on Ahad Radio. So those of you who have access to that, you can go out there, view, make comments. And just tell exactly how you feel about this initiative, you know, and how it can be able to make a difference in the lives of people. And we also on Spotify and uh, we on Stitcher. So all the different platform is created to be able to help us, you know, collectively come together to be able to bridge that gap, bridge that call, answer the call, you know, that we'll be able to help be a bridge builder to our community, our society. So just to kick up tonight, I, I want to say welcome those who are joining. And I'm also doing this. It will be available for those who will watch later. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I have a live, you know, this be the live video for this month. I will try as much as possible to have like twice a month. And uh, today, as I said, five, six days ago, I posted on the Facebook group, the Bridge Call Civility Initiative on Facebook. So for those of you who are not part of it, I want you to please check it out. And the Bridge Call Civility on Facebook, we have almost, I think, 94 to 92 members right now. So the topic was, so just to get started, I did mention some of the key things that we're going to be, you know, discussing, you know, and I mentioned about entrepreneurship for women, youth, and kids, you know, all around the world, you know. And I needed to have some inputs specifically from developing countries in Liberia and more other countries. And I was just hoping to see that people can be able to come up collectively to be able to give the input. Because we're trying to create a dialogue, a paradigm that we can be able to work together, but it also take a mindset. You know, we all having a mindset where we can be able to understand, to know where we are. And I always tell people, you know, what I'm getting at here, I'm trying to use, you know, user a people perspective and not just expert perspective. Many a time we find experts, you know, trying to tell the people, this is the right thing, this is this, this is that. But I do believe 
the reason why many a time those things don't work, many a time people try to remove people from it and come in with the ability of saying, I know everything. And I'm telling people with the civility, bridge called civility, no. We don't know everything, you know. We are here trying to be able to share this initiative, to be able to let you take ownership of the initiative and also just be a part of what is happening. So just to keep going out there, uh, the next one we have sustainable capacity building. You know, we live in an environment where in we hear about building this capacity, doing this. You know, we got to be in a position where in we build a capacity that is more sustainable. Again, as I said, many a time people are not intentional about what they want to do. So they come out to say, oh, I want to do this. If you want to do things that will be, you know, impactful on the people, you got to be number one intentional that you want to see that change and not just doing this to be able to check the box and say, oh, yeah, this is gone and I'm done. You know, so all of those things is important that we as people, you know, get to that point and realize as leaders that we got to be intentional. Do we want to see people grow? Are we happy when we see those people grow that they don't even need us? They can be on their own. Or do we want them to be always connected to us and looking out as the source? You know, at the Bridge Call Civility, what we do believe in that we want people to be empowered in a sense that they no longer feel connected to us, but they feel empowered in a way they can stand on their own. They can, they, they can go and impact other people. And that's the whole importance about the Bridge Call Civility Initiative. You know, we want to build people up, empower people in a way that they become a bridge that will help other people, you know, succeed, that will help other people grow, that will help other people develop. So in this kind of instance, you know, it's a tough thing. Many a time people feel, oh, no, I just want to help this person. If you want to intentionally help someone, you got to meet them at that point of the need, but also empowerment, empower them in a way that they can be able to become self-sustainable. What do I mean? I always ask people, you know, I'm one of those, you know, I'm involved with a lot of philanthropic work, but I'm more intentional. I always believe, even with family, I want to help people in a way that you can be able to help yourself and grow. Not always look at me. I've had friends and family back home who, when I'm helping, I tell them, what can you do, you know? My point is, I don't always want to be the one like sending you money, sending you this, no. When I gave you this, what can you do to be able to help yourself? Can you work towards, you know, building up your own capacity in a way that you no longer look up to me? I can do things as a thing in which, you know, and not looking at me as being the source of your data bread, as being the source of, you know, everything you want. And we got to get to that point where our mentality is set up in a way that we understand that we all have a gift, you know. God has given each one of us a gift or sometimes even multiple gifts, you know. We got to deep into those things. With me, you know, like my life here, everything that I'm doing today into the United States, starting from back home, Liberia, I knew I had a purpose in life. I knew I had a gift. But guess what? I had to find that. Even in the midst of people telling me, no, you're not this. You can't be this. You can't be that. Today, guess what? I'm standing in the position where in. I am who I am. Everything that people say I was never going to be, um, even more than that today. I am even in a position where in the dream that I wanted to be into construction, I'm into it today. It's a great thing. So wherever you are, wherever position you're talking, I want you to start coming up with that mindset because it's all mentality thing, you know, so to be able to understand that. Now, the topic that I posted, you know, into the group, the Facebook group, the Bridge Call Civility Initiative. So for those of you who haven't checked it out before, when you look at uh, on my page right now, live screen here on the heading, we have all the different places that you can follow on. The Bridge Call Civility Initiative, you know, getting on there to be able to make sure that uh, you can be able to, you know, give your input, contribute towards what we're doing here, and just give your comment and feedback, you know, about this initiative. So the next thing we'll talk about, uniting culture of honor. You know, the culture of honor is something that's very more important, and we will be discussing that, you know, as part of our topic into the Bridge Call Civility through different, you know, live streaming and podcasts. Uh, we have community empowerment and development. Those are things that I specialize in and I want to be able to share my experiences and skills to be able to help. As I said, you can develop a community, you can empower a community in a way that they become self-sustainable. We talk about leadership through honor and service to people. Now, many a time people see leadership, you know, as being that point of having power over others that you can be able to do that and forget to know that leadership means servants. Now, if you want 
leadership. You desperately need leadership. You have to calm down, become humble, and be able to serve others. Serve the very people that you are leading and not rule them. You know, but all those things we can discuss that, as I said, there will be time we'll deal with this thing one by one. So the topic that I have, and I want to comment, and we will have, I would say at the end of this month, there will be a draw where I will have, you know, the three people who commented, I already have them because we're just waiting to see over a week to see if people will be able to really, really see where I'm getting at. Because this group is supposed to be interactive. We need to be able to contribute inputs so that we all can come around and be able to make sure that we achieve this. So why, this was the question, why is this important to empower women entrepreneurs in our society? Now, they can apply to Liberia, Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, United States, and empower the world. And most of the time, focusing on developing country because they always look up to the developing or the developed world you know for everything when they do have the opportunity they do have you know access and gifts and talent i can tell you some of the things that i'm doing today in the country into the construction field it's not something new that i learned from here it's something i already learned in liberia so today when i'm doing thing and i'm you know building i'm i'm doing construction project i'm thinking outside the box so it's so important that people understand african understand that you have a gift you have a talent you need to own it. You need to dip into that. You need to find your purpose and be able to align that vision with a generational promise. And I tell you, when you do that, you're going to, to find a lot of success. Stop selling yourself, making it look like you don't have anything. You have the power. You have the authority over your own destiny. Never, ever get to the point to feel that someone is more powerful than you in the sense where in they have more blessing. God has given every one of us a gift. And there's a generational promise that tied to it. When you find that, you know, there is a blessing that always come with it. So please try to first thing I tell people, you got to have a purpose in life. You know, I talked about it last time, you know, about the three things. Know who you are, you know. Once you know who you are, you'll be able to figure out exactly some of the things, you know, that drives you and all the kind of thing, what you're passionate about. The next one, number two, you know, know what you want. If you don't know what you want in life, this world will give you everything of anything that you don't even need. And then if you have to figure out among those things what you want, I'm telling you many of the time, you make the wrong choices. I came in this country, you know, with the construction background when I came up, even though I had administration, you know, background from the United Nations, you know, running small offices, you know, back there in the sector. There were a lot of people used to be saying, oh, oh, you know, you in the area, you have this gift. Why can't you focus more on, uh, you know, uh, management? I have have job opportunity, you know, they call me, they tell me, oh, I want you to come and do this into management. We have this management position. You know, I told them, I'm like, no, I don't, you know, some of the things I wrote there, I tell them thanks for the opportunity, but I want something that will be really focused more into construction because I was focused. I knew who I was. I knew what I am. That's why I tell people, this country don't change people. People change. This country even bring, it just create the opportunity that help bring out the true thing that already in people. If you stay true to yourself, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you will always be yourself and nothing else can change you. So it's important that you know who you are, but also know what you want in life. You can't just take whatever comes your way and not even know what you want. The third thing is you got to learn how to get it. I came out in the country with all the background from construction back home, Liberia. Uh, it was a time where in I could not even be accepted, you know, into any job, into construction here because of fact, I didn't have the knowledge and experience from here. But guess what? I had to go through the process. I got to learn. I had to read. I had to go to the point where in, you know, partner with somebody like even Brian Vaux Construction, who really helped me to be able to learn more, you know, through Hannah Vaux from DCTC, who connected me to all that. So we need people. But when you are very determined and focused, people will see that in you and they say, oh, I have to help this person get them connected. And that was what happened. Every time in my school, when I'm writing people and I'm writing, I'm telling people, I want to have this business. They were like, oh, but well, you just come and you haven't even settled. But listen, that was what was driving me. I realized I'm like, if I got to stay in this country, I got to own the business here because I want to be able to have time to spend with my family. I want to be able to have time to spend with my kids. And it was so important to me, you know, controlling and managing your time is the most important thing you can ever wish for in this country, you know. But guess what? I went through the testing process. I went through the like every other person to become a licensed general contractor. I wasn't complacent. I just 
said, no, I'm not going to be a, a, a subcontractor. I wanted to be a general contractor. I want to be one to be able to create jobs for people and not being there waiting for other people to create jobs for me. So that was my position. Guess what? Everybody's important. Subcontractors are very important to me today in running my business. I honor them. I appreciate them. And I love them. But let, guess what? Everyone has to find their own path in life to know where you are. You know, today, I am a general contractor hiring people, and I'm doing all those things, you know. So in regards to the question, when I mentioned there was uh, three people that, you know, gave a feedback on the Facebook group, uh, we have one here from Dana Tule Morris from Liberia. She said, it's important to empower women entrepreneurs because they can add sustainably, sustainably to the economic and poverty reduction. And the community she called in from is the new Matade County, the new Matade County in Mosorado. You see, the county is Mosorado. She's from the new Matade in Liberia. It sounds like I'm even forgetting my places even in Liberia again. So she's from the new Matale and the county in Mosorado. But as I said, she's saying that it is important to empower women entrepreneurs because they can add substantially, you know, to the economic, you know, and they can help with the growth of a nation. And they also help with the property reduction because when you empower women, they tend to get in power. And we all know women are very powerful in the way we're in coming from, you know, taking care of the kids, the family, and everything, the home. They are so powerful. So that that's all. I want to say thank you, Diana, for that input. And that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to have the conversation, you know, interactive. People come up because like when you speak like this, it's based on where you are, what you are experiencing. It gave me, you know, the opportunity to be able to also listen and also create content that will be able to meet the needs of, you know, people like you. I think you are also one of those women entrepreneurs. I'm very proud of you, all you're doing. Thanks so much, Diana. To the Morris from uh, New Matale in Maserado County, and then we have uh, the next person was uh, Tato. So you know it was so interesting. I was watching Tato is my little brother, Tato Stama in Liberia, mostly in Tottenham Bombing County. Uh, but I can tell you, you know, when they talk about honor, one of the things that I want to say here, this is my little brother. But from the time he realized that God has started blessing me and taking me into position, even from the United Nations, started working. He changed his mindset. He never took upon his time to ever call me by my name. He always mentioned, sir, 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 once he realized the, the, you know, the power of authority. And I tell you this thing, sometimes people don't understand. These little things, is important when you know the culture of honor. You know how system works. You have a mindset to be able to adjust, to be able to realize, regardless how familiar you, you might be with somebody. You got to learn how to honor them. You got to learn how to appreciate them. You have, have to do that. As I said, my brother Tata Sistama, up to this point, and sometimes I always tell people, he never calls me by my name. He always, sir, sir, you know. And sometimes I wonder, like, wow, this guy gave me so much honor. But guess what? He loves me, but guess what? He also respect me for who I am. He also respect, you know, my position. So it's important. The culture of honor that we're talking about, you know, it also part of the Bridge Core Initiative. Many a time we get carried away by ourselves to be able to understand that when we find ourselves into some form of position or somewhere, or because we, we familiarize ourselves with people, we don't tend to respect them. I've seen today sometimes people in leadership, you know, look down on people. But on the other hand, we find that people who are also not even respecting their own leaders. Sometimes they just go out giving insult, they're giving, you know, on public or social media. You can't keep doing this thing. You got to know the importance of honor. And I'm telling you, you got to give honor to where honor is due. Because guess what? Every CEO you sow is going to come back to you. You're going to reap that. Now, when you get into that position tomorrow and people start to do that, then you wonder, why is this happening? Because you first sow those seeds into people. As I said, I'm so proud of my brother. And this is why he wrote here. Judging from experience, women statistically, you know, reinvest their income in communities and family at higher rate as compared to men <laughs> you know i can tell you this guy is very articulate when he's writing this is title as i said my little brother he's very articulate you see what he's seeing right now based on his experience he's seeing statistically you know he realized that women reinvest the income that when you give women something they have the ability to be able to bring that thing back into family or transform that thing and make it into something else that will give you more that can help community family and even you know at a higher rate compared to men guess what he might be right. And when we look today, women 
as a steward, I consider them as a steward, like my mom, you know, she came out from the point where in, she used to go into the woods, get fruits, so bring in time and sell. And I used to be there every step of the way. And today I always tell people that I'm living my childhood memory even from here. She used to get those things, come and sell, get food. And guess what? When she even get this food, she's not even thinking about family. She also share with other people who don't have the opportunity to be able to even go into the woods and get fruits and come and sell. So people don't understand the power of women is so much more. God make women so special in a way that they can multiply things that you give them. You give them one thing to do it. Don't get me wrong. They are generous men. They are great men. But by nature, women, you know, I, when I sit down sometimes, imagine looking at my mom when she used to be sharing the food, you know, after cooking, you know, she would come up, you know, all the plates would be spread around and everybody in the home, you know, have their own place. And she had everything measured in order of, you know, the viral level, their eating level and stuff like that. You know, it used to be so interesting. But, you know, one of the things, again, that I really, really appreciate, you know, and sometimes it get me into tears, in the midst of everything she used to be doing, when she used to be sharing this food, when she found out that it's not enough to the point, guess what? She will always be the last, you know? And I'm telling you this thing here. She will always be the last. And when she gets something, when I look and see, she doesn't even have enough because she already shared with everybody, with all the kids, and then she won't be the last to be able to have because she wanted to make sure that we are taken care of. So that's the power of women. Women will always make sure the family is taken care of, the community is taken care of, you know, before they even think about themselves. Many a time, men, we also think about ourselves, you know, what can we do for this? What can we do? They're not all men. But I can tell you, they are great father and they are great mother. And I will tell people, not every woman is a mother and not every man is a father. And I, I, and I will say this again. The heart of a father is the heart of God. The heart of a mother is the heart of God. Because a true mother or a true father understand the needs of their family and will make the necessary sacrifice to be able to protect and be able to find food and to be able to clothe them and be able to do everything possible, like my dad, my mom, you know, and a lot of other women, you know, out there in the country who have struggled for that case to make sure they stand up. There was a time when people come to my mom, you know, they came to her and told her, can you just give me your, your kids, you know, let it go and stay with me, you raise her, because you, you can't take care of them, you don't have this, you can't do this. And I remember my mom always saying, no, if you want to help me, help me for what I am, and I will try and I'm helping myself, but I'm not going to give my kid whatever I eat, they're going to eat it. I'm going to make sure that I give them food every day to eat. If I got to go into the woods, I will go into the woods and get fruit and come and sell. So she was powerful. You know, I call her my hero because she taught me a lot to know that never get yourself so low to the point and feel that, you know, you helpless, you can't be able to take care of yourself, your family. She kept fighting. She was a fighter. She fought every way possible, even though she couldn't get a job. But guess what? She was going into the woods, getting some wild fruits to be able to bring into the town and sell and then make money and be able to put food on the table. Many a time we used to even get to eat. Just listen to me. We will go into the farm and do stuff. And when we get the food, the food feeling cooking, we're coming into the time, sometime 1, 12 in the morning before we, before we eat. Excuse me. You know, we eat at 11, 12, 1 a.m. We're talking about in the morning. And that food going to go up for a whole day while we're trying to go find something else. That's the kind of life I've been through it. I used to go even, you know, setting on my head. I used to do a whole lot of stuff. I went, let me tell you, there's nothing when it comes to survival that I haven't done myself. My mom taught me to be able to fight for what you believe, to be able to work hard, and to be able to just keep pushing for what you believe in. And I can tell you, the power of that helped me today, wherever I go, when people say, this is impossible, you just ignite my feeling to go for it. You are just inspired me. When you tell you, you can't do this, this is impossible. You are just help, you know, inspire me to be able to go for it. I came up here, people were like, oh, uh, you know, construction is for white people, you know, and uh, you can't get in this. It's a tough industry to be in. Why you want to do construction? You know, you go at management, you start with the UN, what can you do there? I'm like, construction is what I love. It's my generational promise. It's what I want to do. Then I ask a question, do they give tests? He said, yes. I'm like, well, if they give tests, guess what? Do they discriminate that the test is only for white people and not for black people? He said, no. The test is open across the board. I'm like, okay. Well, if that test is there, it's open to a black person, I'm going to go take the test. It's not just open to white people. So the opportunity is there for everybody. You have to get and you got to believe in yourself and let us start limiting ourselves based on this negative paradigm. And then we stop ourselves from growing. Guess what? I went through that test the first time I failed. 
And guess what? You know one thing I like about this country? When you fail, it does not mean you're stupid. You just didn't get it right. You got to go and try again. So I went there, and then I got that was uh, 50 something. And I needed 73 or 75 or something, you know. I didn't make it. But guess what? I was very glad that at least I make above 50. I was like, oh boy, above 50? That means I can, I can make this work. I went the second time, took the test, and failed. But whenever I failed, I was so determined to have it rescheduled. You know, to be able to take it to the point that I didn't even want that to even hammock me or even put me in a position to feel, you know, frustrated or looked down on myself. I came in this country. I met people in this country who were born here, were going through the same process like me. I had to encourage myself, listen, it doesn't matter where I come from. You know, it doesn't matter my background. It doesn't matter the color of my skin. You know, what was important for me, one is a process that allowed me to be able to enter into this thing, you know, take a test and go through that. I'm going to go there. I went through that. But I'm telling you, when you are raised by a strong mother who keep fighting, who know how to fight, who know how to make anything possible, you just don't quit. And that's what I got from my mom and my dad. And I can tell you, when I say it is important to empower women, it's so important because I have lived it. I have seen it. I've gained the experience from my mom. So nobody can tell me that, you know, women can just do this. Let me tell you a story. You know, I had a project that was in Brooklyn Park, and we were doing some uh, event center, you know, upgrading, you know, repurposing a building that was one of bowling alley or trying to repurpose that to an event center. And guess what? When I get into the process, I had the contract, I awarded the contract, I needed other subcontractor to work. So, and when I started looking, making calls, trying to make sure, get some of the subcontractor on board, guess what? 99.9% .9 were all male or guys, you know, have the business running and this, that. And then I, while I was going through the bait and thing, looking at all the estimates, then I realized a day or two before I could make a decision, there was a female, you know, that sent in her estimate. But guess what? When she sent in her estimate, she also reached out to me in person and told me, say, listen, I really want this job, you know, but I can show you. I can give you the best deal on this job, but I can also do my best to make you proud to know that I will do this. But, you know, guy coming from that perspective, from a background where people feel this is an area that are predominantly dominated by men, but she has a demo company, you know, and I can tell you, I'm so proud of her, what she's doing. This is a strong, hard-working woman with her team, you know. Scrap Buster, I'm telling you. They came in, and when she came up there, and then I gave her the project to do it. And guess what? I was still, you know, feeling that kind of a man waiting. Ah, but in my mind, I knew. I've always lived with my mom and see what she's done, and I always have trust and belief in women. Guess what? I gave her the project. And when I gave her this project, she started to do it. I just gave it to her, you know, and all the other people I told her, you know, I will give you the next one, but this one I have to give it to this, you know, because of this. And I always do that. If I find, I send a bit out and I find women and guys at the end of the day, women, when you qualify, you will be given priority to be able to bid, you know, and we'll go through the process. I will treat you just as like any ordinary guy who is there. And, but two, number one, I will give you opportunity, even though you qualify, but women, because I believe when you empower them, they can give you the best. So that's just how I do it. I have a lot of jobs that have so many, you know, I mean, guys working on. And there are very few of those work that women can do. So these very few women jobs that women can do, I try to protect it in a way. I want female to be in power. And I can tell you what, you know, to end that story, that job was done. And I can tell you exceptionally well. I was shocked, but not surprised. But I was truly honored because that just helped reveal my belief when I tell people that women, you know, has so much potential in making things right, in getting the job done. That just helped edify, you know, reaffirm my statement. So even to some of the guys who were there, I told them, oh, the job is done. The woman did it even ahead of schedule. And they came out there, they're like, oh, boy, what the heck did she do here? I'm like, you see what I'm telling you? I told you, you guys know, oh, don't give it today. What well, you want to give a job to a woman? Now you see. But they all felt proud, and they all get to understand, oh, wow, boss, that was the right decision. And I said, listen, she needed this job, too. I know she had employees and people she's working with. And most of the time when people see women into this area, they don't want to. But I want to be one of those general contractors that will create opportunity for women and also youth and young people to be able to help get there. Because let's guess what? People are helping me get to what I am today. So I want to be that bridge. So the bridge called civility I'm talking about today is something that I've always been living. It just gets to the point where in God revealed to me that now is the time you got to take the step and move this forward. So the heart started moving this. So... I'm telling you, it is important to empower women. So we hear from uh, Diana Tule, we hear from Tato, and then there was another person, Joseph Hay, you know, that made a comment, you know, 
So this for the three people who will be getting into the draw and they will be getting a gift card and it sounds like all of them are from Liberia. So just a haze from Liberia. He said, thanks for the warm welcome, Mr. Branko Estama. The empowerment of women entrepreneurs are important to our day-to-day -day activity. It helps provide the equilibrium environment between the box sex in the home. So I don't know what you're talking about, the community in the country, you know, in the county, the continent, and even the world at large. So what he's saying also here that is important that we help women because they bring so many things to the table, you know, and not just to the home, but they impact the whole world. Look at the whole world today. Women, everyone who have come through the world have been through women, the power of women, you know. So it's important that we do that, you know, try to empower them and give them chance. So I just want to say, Joseph Hayes, we had Diana, Tule Morris, and Tato Stama. I want to say congratulations. You will be the tree that will be receiving a gift card. I will post that into the Facebook group. And I want to encourage everybody out there, you know, go to our Bridge Call Civility on Facebook. The group is there. And also follow us on uh, Apple Podcasts. Also follow us on uh, Google Podcasts. Follow us on iHub Radio, Spotify, and Stitcher, you know. It's important that we make our conversation, you know, not create the dialogue that people can be able to see what we're talking about here. It's important. The Bridge Call Civility Initiative. It is an initiative of the Tama Foundation. And I want to be very, very, you know, humble and proud to say the Tama Foundation is an honor to my mom, Mary Kuma Modu Tama, you know, for her hard work, initiative, and perseverance in trying to give me the best and even all her kids and her family to be that mother who stood, fight, and work hard. You know, I'm blessed, I can tell you. My father was, my father is the entrepreneur, and my mom is a philanthropic person. So I'm truly honored in a way where I had to create something for both of them. So the Tama Foundation, for those of you don't know, it will be coming on the website. It's still undergoing some maintenance right now. The Tama Foundation is done in honor of my mother, Mary Kuma Modu Tama, because I just want to honor her. Because even in the midst of war and things, Wherever she has food, she will share with her neighbor, her friends, and people. And it's a great thing. You don't find that happening. Doing in terms of civil war, people trying to keep everything for themselves, but she was still sharing. You know, she was still sharing to people. So now she would say, Go give the person this. They need it, you know. Even though she knew that she needed it the most, she always was doing it. She was selfless. When she, you know, giving food and thing, she would make sure she's the lie. Many times I used to worry that she does she don't eat enough. Would she have a strength the next day to wake up? But she always made sure that we were fell in a way that we will survive and live while she's trying to make it to another day. That's honor, girl. And that's why I want to honor my mom so much with this, you know, and the foundation is in honor of her and the time out, you know, construction is in honor of my dad. My dad is a visionary. He dreamed way back then, then that this is the best thing he wanted to do. You know, people don't understand when they see Tama and son, the, you know, construction driving the street in the U.S. and Liberia, they feel that, oh, it's actually my dad's dream. I'm truly honored and blessed that he just trusted me with that dream and told me when you ever get a chance, I want you to establish the business to be able to do that. But guess what? I made that happen. And I felt what just for him, I get to realize this was our generational primary construction. And since we started, God has been faithful. And I'm truly honored to be the child that my father has trusted and God has blessed me to take that role. So whatever family you're in, let me let you know today. God has a generational promise for every family. You just got to find it. It didn't just happen as a magic for me. It get to the point where in, I had to find that. It took time. I didn't even believe what my dad was telling me. Coming at age five years, telling me about Tama and some construction. I'm like, what this guy is talking about? Well, guess what? It was ongoing. 2003, I started working with the UN. I still couldn't understand when he kept reminding me, now that you're working with the UN, you get money. Why can't you just do the family business, Tama and some construction? It was all about me working for people and getting paid. I didn't knew that God called me to be one that will create job and opportunity for people. I was always just feeling complacent. Like, okay, I want to go get a job. I will get a job. I'll be working days and doing that. When God was saying, you are a job creator. I have given you this promise to be able to create job for people. Not to be, you know, an employee. It's a process that you can learn, but your true calling is to be a job creator that will contribute to the economy. 2012, I officially established the business in Liberia and then gave it to my dad. And he told me, no, you got to be part of this. 
So while I was working with the UN, you know, then I had a pattern I had to be given towards the construction company. And I tell you, it was from then when I started employing, you know, friends, family, getting people who in need. I realized I started helping people in a better way to help themselves. Or then giving somebody money, I give them job, they work, they have, you know, labor, and then they, they, they rather be paid for their labor. That was something I never thought in my life could ever do. But then when I start seeing the impact of what that business was, I'm like, wow. So my dad, way back then, he knew about the generational primary, how important it was to be able to impact people and not just ourselves. So I'm telling you today, when you impact women, you impact a generation. And let me tell you something. Go have create a man with a special purpose and a special value. It is so much more important. I tell people, never ever get to a point to believe that, you know, you don't need a man in the home. You don't need a woman in the home. No. Both women and men are very important. The mother and the father is very important in the home. I can tell you here from what I'm telling you. What I learned from my dad, my mom could not give me that. What I learned from my mom, my dad could not give me that. And he can never give me that. I can tell you, I learned courage, sacrifice, persistence. Hard work, diligent, you know, from my mom. And guess what? When it comes to my dad and discipline from my mom, let me just add that one discipline. <laughs> because when we little, you know, I always share it with people. You know, she was a, she's a disciplinarian. I'm just shocked right now the world have changed to the point where in, when I see my other siblings coming, when they do things, you know, and they get away with it, and they're like, oh, boy, you guys don't want to be in my day. Because my day, the warning from my mom, was a whip that I'll be struggling laying down somewhere on way on it because she will hit me. I fall down way on the other side trying to wake up and she's telling me, I haven't even touched you yet. I'm like, oh boy, if you haven't touched me yet, but just by this one, then I think I got to get myself together. But guess what? She was a tough woman. You know, she was trying to guide on in the process. I can tell you all the discipline that I learned from her today. I'm truly blessed and honored. I can never, never trade that for anything else. That's why I honor her. I honor them so much today. And I can tell you, when you go on the website, tamayandson.com, you'll be able to see her there. You'll be able to see them. And you'll be able to hear about the incredible story about how a little dream from a place in a little time in Liberia come to the U.S. And see, today we have Tamay and Son construction in the U.S. And, you know, doing a lot of projects with the city, you know, city of Brooklyn Park and, and just a lot of businesses I'm working with, you know, providing residential and commercial construction in the U.S. here. As a general contractor, I creating job. I am creating job for people, helping family, you know. But in addition to that, I have a passion for nonprofit. So that's why this initiative is so important to me and the Tama Foundation is so important because it is through this, what I have for the business, I can be able to help and be able to do that. And I tell people, when you find your purpose in life, I'm telling you, and you align that purpose or vision with your generational promise, success will find you. From the day I get to realize that, my father's dreams was a generational promise that I needed to take ownership in. It was not about me. You know, many a time we do things we want or need to be on it. People tell me, oh, why you didn't say Branco Tama construction? Why are you saying this? But when I tell them, oh, okay, wow, that means you really like your dad, though. They didn't, they didn't know that I was just doing this as an honor. Let me tell you something. Honor is something beyond explanation when you honor people the gratitude the reward of honor is so much more than anything money can buy so i want to leave this for you to understand that you know take that the culture of honor is so important despite everything happening around the world today we have to get back to that point where in we can go back to the culture of honor so as i said again here you know i want to say congratulations to dana tule tata stamba and Joseph hate for the comments, and I wanted to make that group interactive, and it will be monthly, you know, gift card, I will find sponsor who will be giving stuff going. I will be posting out the next question, you know, asking the next thing, I want people to participate. And also, as I said, as you do that, go into Apple Podcasts, go into Google Podcasts, leave your comment, your feedback, you know, about the Bridge Call Civility. I have radio, Spotify, you know, Stitcher, you know, please do that, you know, and I will be watching, we'll have people looking at this thing, trying to see who is ready, ready, connecting to this uh, initiative and making an impact. So I also have a former co-worker of mine. He didn't leave a comment, but uh, he said he was interested. Uh, Paul new one. I'm interested in the topic and I'm waiting for comments. So he didn't leave a comment, but uh, as I said, the three people that left a comment in there, I want to just honor them to know that congratulations to them and they will be 
you know, getting some uh, gift card for the participation. As I said, I want this to help build a platform in a way we can be able to reach one another. If I have to come down and bring things Liberia initiative, I need to use a people perspective. I don't want an air perspective. Perspective. I'm not coming out to tell people say, oh, I know everything. I want to do the no. I have my own perspective right, as an expert. But what I'm interested in, the people or the user perspective. Guess what? I don't want to come, you know, to do something where it wouldn't be impactful. People on the ground know their situation, know how they want to be approached, know how they want to do things. I want to be there to be able to guide them and help make this successful. So I'm coming out there as an expert. But I'm more interested in people perspective. So that is why the bridge course civility is about people. It's about people listening to the people, seeing the needs of the people, and connecting with the people. That's what we had in the past. NGO will go out there, go build things or do things for people that have no meaning at the end of the day when they leave. It does that. It doesn't have no significant impact. So let's start working together in a way where we can be able to connect, you know, and we can be able to make sure we meet the needs of the people from where they are. What I'm telling people, I always tell them, listen, you have what it takes to be able to build your country. You have what it takes to be able to empower yourself. Never feel to the point that you are so inferior or you are so down to the point that you have nothing. You have gifts. I can tell you some of the wonderful and the brilliant gifts that we find in Africa, you've never even seen it here. And then when people tell me, oh, you're smart, you're dizzy, you're dead. You know, I did a work for someone who told me 40 years I've been in construction. I've never had someone who has been this store up, but more experienced into doing stuff. Guess what? Because I came from Liberia and I think outside the box. So my people, wherever you land back in Liberia, Africa, wherever you are, never fear it's a waste. You have a gift. You have a talent. It gives you the ability to be able to think outside the box. Please do that, you know. And I'm going to, you know, end up on that here. And listen, guys, this is episode two. There will be more coming up. As I said, I went on all the different topics. We talk about entrepreneurship. And what we're talking about today, women. Next time we'll talk about, you know, the youth and kids. From there, we'll talk about building the sustainable, you know, capacity, community, you know, empowerment and development, igniting the culture of honor. Wow, that's a great one. Leadership through honor and service to people. So those are all the topics we'll be in. So I want to say thank you all who are watching out there. I'm truly honored and blessed. Listen, guys, I'm just doing what I love best. I just love, you know, making a difference in the life of people. I want my story to be an inspiration to people out there to be able to learn. I came out in the country in 2012. It was a tough one. Nobody to tell me where to go, what the situation is. No family member here. But guess what? I had to believe that God had a purpose of coming out here. Came out with my luggage and wherever and family. I needed to make this happen. And listen, it was tough. It was hard. But I'm glad I had a mother who raised me and a father who trained me to be not just a great entrepreneur, but also to be a warrior, you know, courageous. I'm not moved by deceit or, you know, this, you know, discrimination or other, I tell people, when someone look at me and tell me, say, oh, you can't do that, I'm like, it's okay, it's fine. I see that as a responsibility for me to prove to them that, no, you are wrong. I can do this. I don't go hating people. There are a lot of people who told me you can't do this, but that's what, I honor them. And I'm very glad that they did because whenever they did that, it helped inspire me. It helped challenge me to be the best person of me, you know. So please, wherever you are, I want to know that. Don't get stuck in where you are. God has a purpose for your life. The three things that you need to do urgently if you haven't done it before, you got to know who you are, number one. If you don't know who you are, you will be someone you're not. Number two, you got to know what you want in life. I wanted to have my own business. I wanted to run my own business. I wanted to work for myself. I wanted to be a job creator. I wanted to contribute to the economy. And this is what I am today. Number three, learn how to get it. Guess what? I learned through the process. Even though I learned back home, I came up here, there were some challenges. I had to go through the process. Went in classroom, you know, went through testing process. Listen, these are all part of the process. And when you learn this thing and you learn it the right way, guess what? I am what I am today. I can tell you, I can wake up in the morning, five, six o'clock, I'm in my house. I'm still working. Because I'm making phone calls, giving instructions to people to work, making sure things have been done before I even get on the site. I can get on the site 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Some sites, they don't even need me there. I just, you know, tell them what to do and then go back later and check it. I'm telling you, the power of the mind. 
not just the hand, you know what I'm saying? The hands, the mind. We got to change that mentality. It's about time that we start creating wealth. It's about time that we start creating. Listen, if you love something, own it. I love construction. I own a construction business. I love, you know, participating to nonprofit. Well, guess what? I'm not right now on a nonprofit company. I'm a nonprofit business that I'm running. So if you love something so much, go for it and own it. Peace, guys. Wherever you are, I want to say God bless you. Keep following your dream. Never give up. Listen, I am a living testimony. If people can tell me I couldn't have been what I am today, but I can tell you I'm here, you can be here. You can live that dream. You can live your best life. Never get to a point age or anything tell you, say, oh, you cannot make it. Listen, you can do it. If my mom with no education could be able to make it, and today she's leading women organization, my father taught her how to write, homeschool her. She was so determined. Guess what? You have everything you need today. Please keep focused, keep persistent, keep dreaming, and keep believing in yourself. God bless you.